Did anybody notice this thing kind of resembles a tricorder? Like who at Samsung is a Trekkie? Because I see you. I know what you did. I get it. Hey, s'mores, welcome to Morse Code. I have got the new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 here, and I have been really excited to share this review with you after playing with this thing for about a month now. This is the third iteration of the Flip line and the first Flip that I have officially purchased, and I have been very happy with this phone so far. This is actually the first foldable that I have seen in the wild being used by somebody that is not a tech YouTuber. So like, consider this product for gifting to people in your life or for yourself. People like it, and there's a lot of reasons for that. So the Z Flip 3 starts at $999.99, so straight at a thousand bucks for the 128 gigs or 1,050 for 256 gigs. And it comes in seven different color options. So I went with 128 gigs in the lavender model because obviously, as this is my favorite color, I got this phone for about $550 after trading in an older Samsung, and I also got a free pair of Galaxy Buds 2 and a silicon cover for the phone, both free as a pre-order add-on. Now, by the way, I also have a Samsung store coupon code. It's 5% off listed in the description. Just click on the title to expand the text. It is a referral code, so if you use it, let me know if the coupon works. So let's go ahead and start with the design. Samsung is using the same fancy hinge on both the fold and the flip. Again, it's got a very satisfying snap close. So it's very, very satisfying whenever you close it, and it does stay closed. Their hinge is very strong. It holds to whatever angle you choose to open it to. It also feels like it's not going to randomly fold whenever you're using the phone fully open. It feels stiff whenever you're using it, but it does not feel cheap whatsoever. It also looks really clean this year with less bezels, and it's also thinner. Samsung has refined it, and I really like it. Now this one weighs a lot less than my iPhone 12 Pro Max, but it's also skinnier and taller whenever it's unfolded. Folded, I love that it's so small. It actually fits in my back pocket without sticking out of the top, and it actually fits in the palm of my hand too. There's something to say for that form factor of a flippy phone. Like my first cell phone way back in the day was an LG flip phone back when I think it was singular was a thing. And this one brings back that same feeling of nostalgia. I do like that it includes IPX8 water resistant, but it is not dust resistant. So don't get dirt under that hinge or it could really mess up the folding display. There are two screens on here. This one on the front is mostly for notifications and for quick tasks and the main large display when you unfold it. This cover screen is a neat little thing. It is four times bigger than its predecessor, and supposedly it is more durable as well. Now, I didn't have a Flip 2 to test that, so I couldn't tell you for certain. It is perfect for just checking the time or the weather or just checking your calendar real quick. There aren't a lot of widgets for it, but you can download third-party apps to allow you to access other third-party widgets. However, those are APKs. I usually just stick with Google Play, but I do like that it will show you notifications without having to open the phone. You can customize the background and the clock preferences in your display settings. And I really like how the glass on this housing, it just kind of flows from the lavender casing right over the display and around those cameras. So it all feels very refined. I also like this little feature where you can double tap to turn it on or off really quickly. I think that's such a cool little feature. And you can also use the nicer rear cameras, which are right next to this display, for a quick selfie or a video. It's so useful. Now you don't get as many options in terms of settings you can use with this display. So if you want to use any of the traditional Samsung camera app features, open the phone to access those and use the rear facing cameras like you normally would. So to access your camera, all you have to do is double tap on the power button. I like to use the palm feature and then you can take a picture. Now I might as well give you some photo examples with this rear camera setup while we are on the subject. And if you have stuck around this far into the video, would you mind subscribing? It does help me reach my career goals as this is my full-time job. And I will also be making a lot more video reviews in the coming months. So it will bring valuable information right into your YouTube feed. Now, unlike the Fold 3, this one has no telephoto camera on the back. So you can only get 10 times digital zoom. Of the three previous Samsung 
phones from the past year, I feel like the S21 Ultra will get you the best photos of the bunch. And you can see tons of examples from that one in my S21 Ultra video from this past, I think it was in January that I reviewed that one. You will find camera hardware to be about the same for the included lenses as they are on the Fold 3, though the Fold 3 does have a couple of extra ones. Now this one also has that HDR10 plus recording, tracking autofocus, it does have Corning Gorilla Glass and optical image stabilization on the wide angle camera for your stabilization. Now similar to my other Samsung phones, this one does sometimes overexpose the clouds in the photos, but the rest of the photography is very crisp and very clear, and my brightly lit photos had no noise or grain. I was able to capture some really beautiful landscape photos with that wide angle, as well as some great portraits. Yes, I am wearing a Sailor Moon shirt. Check out my hobby channel, Sailor Snubs, for anime weeb videos, because that is another one of my things. Zooming with the digital 10 times zoom, again, was not great. Now, while that is Denver that you can see way out there in the distance, it still looks like an abstract painting or a potato. This isn't something that I would use very often at all because it just looks kind of bad. These portraits under a tree show how well the Z Flip 3 can even out shadows and bright levels like the bright levels behind me. Reds are still saturated. Sometimes you lose some of the detail in the shots whenever the reds are oversaturating, like in the pink petals on this flower. That's a great example. When you use those rear cameras while the phone is folded, the photos are square, but they do look really good. At night, I had some crazy glare with the silicone case, so I did remove that and the glare totally disappeared. Night mode did do best on stationary objects and it did give me some great quality photography. The ultra wide angle did not do as good a job on night photos as the F1.8 one did, no surprise there. Even portraits looked good, but if we moved, it was really easy to get some blurry faces in there. The front facing camera is a punch hole design, thank God, and the selfies were quite good. Now, regular selfies look better than my portraits. My hair is detailed, everything is well-defined. There's no blurriness going on. Portraits tended to give me blurrier photos, like my hair looked somewhat blurry. And then there's the videos, which you can record up to 4K UHD 30 or 60 FPS. Here's some test footage that I took on the Z Flip 3. Now, all of these are in portrait mode, not landscape, so apologies if that upsets you. All right, this is a audio and video test. UHD 60 on the front facing camera. This is where you're gonna trip on a rock and like roll off the cliff. I am not going to trip on a rock and fall down this crazy canyon. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Delicious fire. Thank you. Oh, you got it. There we go. Oh, here's your Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you. I took a few shots with my drone, but I don't know what the, the laws are for using them on trails like these. But that'd be really, really cool to just have a, a shot that's following you. That would be. And then during in the distance. Ah, this is good times. Recording on the front camera to show video using the front lenses. Now let's talk about that beautiful main display. I gotta say, this display is gorgeous. The crease is a little bit more subtle than on the Fold 3, so whenever you run your fingers across it, it feels a little bit smoother. At least to me, it feels that way. But while durable, you still have to be careful with it. No pressing down super hard with a fingernail. There's no S Pen support on this phone. It is protected with a screen protector, which will hopefully last. I I really hope it does. The screen is very, very bright whenever you're using it. I was able to use this in direct sunlight. I had no issues whatsoever seeing it. Watching videos on here is gorgeous, although it is so skinny that pinching to zoom will cut off quite a bit of the top and the bottom of your video. It does sound lovely whenever its stereo speakers are being used, so listening to my usual podcasts were really clear and easy to understand. It does have a Snapdragon 888 and 8GB gigs of RAM. They don't feel any less zippy than the Fold 3, and even though the screen isn't big enough to multitask like I could on my Fold, you still do have the Edge panel for quick access to your most used apps. And since it's so skinny, you can kind of reach the Edge panel with either hand, and I feel like that's kind of a cool little perk. Now this is built on Android 11, but it is using Samsung's One UI, though I am very glad that they improved the experience by not forcing their own apps as much onto your phone. So for example, if you swipe right from the home screen,
screen, you can now use Google's Discover screen instead of Samsung's Media Center, which is called Samsung Free. That's not necessarily a new thing, but it was implemented very, very recently. Unfortunately, unlike a tricorder, you cannot use this to scan for signs of life. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, and if you are wondering, yes, this is Hollow Taco. I am wearing Xyler with that glossy taco over it to give it that super sparkle. It is very pumpkin spice and it is pumpkin spice season. So that's what you're gonna see, okay? Okay. Hollow Taco was kind enough to send me a box recently and I am loving all of the colors that they included in that box and I'm loving all of their other nail polishes that I purchased as well. So great brand, highly recommend supporting them if you want nail polish. Now let's chat about the battery in here. I am concerned about the 3300 milliampere hour battery. In my testing, this phone did not last as long as the Fold 3, which was also worse than the Fold 2. Now using it to play videos over Wi-Fi for eight hours at 50% brightness drained it to 26%, which is lower than the Fold 3, which hit 39%. It does max out at 15 watts wired charging or 10 watts wirelessly, but there is no charger in the box, just a USB-C cable. I mean, that feels like a small battery for a 2021 phone, especially when I've got the 12 Pro Max and the S21 Ultra, both of which last a much longer time. It's around the same price as those, so that's a really big consideration to make whenever you're thinking about buying one of these phones. Now, side note, I am using the Nomad Base Station Mini, which honestly looks like it's made for the Z Flip 3 whenever I charge this thing overnight because it's the perfect size. So I felt like in that sense, it worked out pretty well since I can use this on a wireless charger. But again, that battery is very, very small. Now I have made several calls on the Z Flip 3 at this point, and I've had no issues with calls dropping or sound being messed up. And these are some of the example speeds that I got on 5G, which is both sub six and millimeter wave. Now, reminder, I am using Google Fi and I live in Denver, so your own call quality and 5G speeds will vary depending on your location and your carrier. Now, while we are at it, let's go ahead and talk about Bluetooth 5.1 on here, which gives me a very good connection to my earbuds. It's wonderful with my watch and it connects to my car. Absolutely no issues. It also includes Wi-Fi up to AX, aka Wi-Fi 6 and NFC. There is no ultra wideband support, but you can use this with Samsung Pay. So other than the battery, I'm really quite happy with this phone. I think Samsung focused a lot on making this phone appeal to a wider audience. And nostalgia aside, I really like how compact and easy it is to use this one. It feels refined and it feels kind of fashionable and high tech at the same time. And those are all really good features that I want in my day-to-day -day technology. But I want to hear your comments. Put them down below. Like this video if you agree with my findings as well. And of course, in the meantime, shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon and buy me a coffee and to the folks that buy my merch, like my stickers and my t-shirts. That all helps keep these videos coming so that you can be a smarter and savvier shopper. There's also the join button down below, which lets you add some cash to my tip jar and get access to all sorts of perks without leaving YouTube. Huge shout out to my newest s'mores, including Brett, Anthony Quintano, who also has a wonderful YouTube channel, you should check it out, M. Marthaler, and Jono. Keep an eye on my channel for my studio build videos, which are coming out each week. And now that the studio is done officially, you will be seeing a lot more videos on this channel as well. Huge thank you to all of my s'mores for subscribing and for watching. And if you wanna watch some similar videos, check out the links here. I'm Shannon Morris and I'll see you soon. Bye y'all.